Okay, which one has eight on it? Uh, look at you guys. Don't count, just look. What we did is we found out fifth graders love to count. Even though we told them not to count, they just had yes. to count. And that was funny. We can talk about that later on. Okay, I think I'm, I'm done with that lesson. We definitely got some different answers, though. <laughs> what, Uta. what happened to your table, misplaced? <laughs> Look at that. We got four different answers or three different groups. And that's typical. Okay, go on. Okay. What we've found is that when you um, when you can organize these items, the ability to subitize up to nine items becomes very easy. The number pattern is consistent rather than disorganized, and the eye quickly the eyes quickly train themselves. So let's go ahead and organize these items. This time, I'm looking for. The same number I looked for last time. I'm ready. I'm asking the SQ to serve them up, and here it comes. As soon as you see it, don't click on the plate. Click up above. Though it is a nice addition to click on the plate that has eight. I'll yeah, do that, that would be time. a good one. Good. Yeah, that'd be cool. Okay, okay so I'm about ready to have the uh, SQ touch. Serve the sushi. Here it comes. Eight. Which plate has eight? Don't count. Look. And I might just ask a, a quick chat, if I may, Uta. Would you type a Y if this was easier to figure out which one had eight in it? Thank you. Mm. Okay. Ah, uh, we just did that. So. So, if the next step is to package the items. But if we've trained the eyes to see these organized quantities, what happens when we package them in containers that aren't only tens? Because life doesn't always come in packages of 10. Yet we refer to the quantity of items even though the packages are not related. For example, eggs come in packages of 12 and we might have five dozen. That's packages. Uh, we have to actually convert to find the actual quantity. So right now Cooper is going to go ahead and introduce the seg sheets and we'll have an activity with this. Well, Cooper just realized that he zoomed in on the whole sheet, and that makes it very difficult for you to see the segs. So I am making my sheets bigger, if you'll just bear with me. Oh, I am so glad Second Life I removed that restriction of the... Uh, <laughs> Mega prints. Of the uh, small, um, whatever they were called, uh, uh, the 10, 10 meter Goodness, limit. I think you could even use your voting board for the segs on this one. Okay. Yeah, big. Sheet back up. Big. Hold on, I'm going to move that one sheet out of your way. And do I have both? There we go. Is that last sheet big enough? No, it's a little bigger than that. It's a little bit more. A little smaller. Yeah, just yeah, just make it a little bit bigger. So can everybody look above the sushi bar? Those are uh, called BNS sheets, base number sheets. And most are designed to either view in two dimensions or three dimensions. Uh, so we have a various various ways of representing these. 
Okay, so if you kind of focus on where I am, I'm not in the way of any of the data that you're going to be looking at. But it gives you a good central point to look at. And I'm going to put in a um, some numbers here. Okay, what I have in here is, is some data, there are different numbers that are being put into sheets. And down in the base A sheet, I think everybody can see that that's 56. But that can't be the same quantity in base 9, because there's five packages of 9 and 6 left over. And that can't be the same amount that's in the packages of 7 which is five and six left over. So I'm going to let Uta talk about this problem. Call this sub, we call this subquan from the Latin supitas quantitas, which means sudden quantity. We package blocks or any other objects like sushi in groups of two through nine, and the new pattern is called a subquan. Subquan only equals quantity in base 10, otherwise known as base A. That's the bottom right sheet under Cooper, up right above the, the sushi bar. Quantity is a base 10 word, just as tens, hundreds, thousands, etc. are base 10 specific. What we have found is that place value is very limiting in describing numbers. So we've introduced place shape instead. Math education is getting a lot of focus right now from many different entities, but we have noticed that most of the technology surrounding the changes are all process-based and repetition-driven. No one has focused on the main problem, the lack of conceptual understanding. Dream Realizations has the solution to this problem. So let's go ahead and take a look at subquanting three and four digit numbers. Remember, four and five year olds can do this. So go ahead and feel free to shout out the answers. Um, just a little background, the four and five year olds, that was my master's thesis. And um, I had them recognizing, Cooper and I had them recognizing four, um, four digit numbers in here and they didn't even have the 3D. Okay, so I'm going to show you a real simple number so you can practice shouting out the four digits so you can see what you're looking at. And you're on it. Now I got to shrink them back down, don't I? This is why it's going to get challenging for your cameras. Just pull one sheet out, Cooper. Oh, just, that's right. I only need one sheet. Yeah, just pull out the base seven. Let's pull out or this whatever. Sheet. Right. Doesn't matter what base. Uh, I forgot. Oh, uh, that's a pull out, isn't it? Uh, I'll scoot it over. Okay. I guess it doesn't need to be quite that big, does it? This is the first time I've actually had some of these other tools available, so bear with us. Okay, here we go. Can everybody see this sheet? And now I'm going to give you um, one, two, three, four. As I turn my editor off. The best way to look at this sheet is from the lower right corner. Uh, if you have trouble with camera position, you can just click on the object, you know, hold down your option key, click on the object with your uh, mouse right by that little, it only takes one, and then just scroll right towards it. Move your mouse right towards it, 
and that will take you right into the corner. So that's one, two, three, four. And we said it's easy to see it in shapes. And there you, there you see it. Let me just go to base nine. Hold on, I'm going to clear out those other bases so they don't go through. Okay, how about that one? Can somebody type in what they're seeing? Just take a guess at it. Yeah, Jerry, you got it. One, two, five, six. Uh, can somebody type in what is the shape of that one if you look at it? You can zoom around it a little, pan around it. It's a cube. Uh, somebody else, can you tell me what the shape is of the two right next to it? Okay, Stai, go ahead. What's the shape? <laughs> okay, let me put up another one here. See if we can't get a little more. Okay. Now this takes this. It doesn't take long. What we're trying to do is get your eye to relax. Quit trying to think. Quit trying to calculate. Just look at it. Uh, actually, you go to a different board, Cherry. Ty, I don't think you saw up high enough. There's actually one up above it. So you're looking at two, four, eight, eight. There are two cubes. There are four squares. There are eight segs and there are eight ones. Um, how many more of these do you think? Which I, I want to do enough that, that you're getting at, but I don't want to do enough to take up too much time. I think we're okay on time, aren't we? This is the big part of it. Yeah, it's 8.30, so we're doing okay. Okay. Well, we'll do a few more. I'd actually like to take take time as uh, you know, let each one of you have a chance. Yeah, Cherry, five, three, two, seven, is and and we want everybody to see this because it's something of the two hundred plus kids that we've tested, only one couldn't do this, and that child had already been diagnosed with dyscalculia, and we think the. Uh, parietal region of, of the brain, the parietal lobe in the brain, which is responsible for this pattern and number sense. Uh, the belief is that, that children that have dyscalculia, it's kind of like dyslexia for math, uh, they have something wrong in that brain. They have just something slightly different and they can't see this. But it really means, unless we have somebody exceptional in here, everybody here can see it. Dyscalculia. I'll see if Rebecca can, or Uta can type this in while I'm. Uh, let me put up another one. Hey, go ahead and, and chat it in when you see it. Type it in. And everybody, just take time to type it in. Just look at it yourself. Don't worry about what's on the chat. Type it in when you think you see it. Just so that this gives us some feedback. It's really important in this kind of uh, presentation that we, we know kind of where you are. There's no reason to lose anybody here. Everybody can do this. It is, it's an aha moment. And so we're just waiting to see. We want to give you enough time and quit thinking. It's easy to just quit thinking. You just kind of look at how many things you see, how many big things, and how many medium, how many kind of small, and then how many tiny. Uh, part of it's your camera. Part of it's a focus of Second Life. Uh, but that's um, 
Let's try a tricky one. Horribly tricky. I just like to say that tricky. <laughs> okay.